Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Friday, September 30. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging citizens to take the necessary precautions and prepare for the impending passage of Hurricane Matthew. The government will do what it can, it will do its part, but I have to appeal to the individual responsibility of each and every Jamaican to look out for your own safety and security. And I want to make that appeal very strongly. A part of that is to heed the warnings that are given from the government, particularly warnings to evacuate and especially warnings to evacuate the keys. Mr. Holness made the plea at an emergency meeting at Jamaica House Thursday. He said the country was on high alert as it prepares for the system, which is expected to start affecting the country by Sunday. After presentations by all the major disaster response agencies, Mr. Holness said he was satisfied that all the disaster management measures have been activated. The Prime Minister, meanwhile, announced that money from the Constituency Development Fund would be made available for members of Parliament to carry out necessary drain and gully cleaning in their constituencies. At 10 o'clock Friday morning, Hurricane Matthew was upgraded to a Category 3 storm. The system, with wind speeds of up to 115 miles per hour, was 495 miles southeast of Kingston. Hurricane Matthew is expected to mostly affect eastern parishes, but the entire island should experience showers into Wednesday. In preparation for Hurricane Matthew, parish councils now have access to $250 million from the Parochial Revenue Fund to carry out drain cleaning and other preparatory works. At an emergency meeting at Jamaica House Thursday, Portfolio Minister Desmond McKenzie said all parish council committees were in a state of readiness. Minister McKenzie also gave an update on supplies available to parish disaster committees for shelters. The ADPEM and the Ministry of Social Security. The Ministry of Social Security have given permission to the disaster committees in the respective parishes that they can get a line of credit uh, to deal with any necessity that may arise. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management has sufficient um, consumables to, to go around. In other news, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries will spend $150 million over the next three years to eradicate the frosty pod rot disease that is affecting the local cocoa industry. Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda says the disease, which was first detected in Clarendon in August, could result in crop losses of between 70 and 80 percent of production. Noting the severity of the situation, Minister Samuda says several measures are being taken to contain and eradicate the disease. Already the officers from the Plant Quarantine and Protection Unit of the Ministry and the officers of the Cocoa Industry Board our technicians from the research and development station at Bordels, as well as officers from RADA, have gone into the field and have initiated the process of identifying and destroying the Frostipod pest. We have already started, and we have already made arrangements to provide the funding necessary to discharge our obligations under this strategy. Mr. Samuda used Thursday's press briefing to call on farmers to be vigilant and to report all known or suspected cases of the disease immediately to the plant quarantine unit or other departments of the ministry. Persons may call the Rural Agricultural Development Authority at 888-275-7232. The Research and Development Division at Bodo's St. Catherine, 754-2957, Cocoa Industry Board 9236413 and the Plant Quarantine Protection Unit at 5885844. Farmers are also being encouraged to use the WhatsApp number 4355828 to send pictures where it is suspected that the disease has infected a crop or farm. Sport Minister Olivia Grain says the terms of reference is being fine-tuned for the interministerial task force set up to review government policy and protocols on the safety and protection of student athletes. The task force was formed following the death of St. George's College footballer Dominique Blake on September 20. 
Minister Green says the task force consisting of representatives from the Education, Health and Sport Ministries will draft an interministerial work plan to deal with several matters. Determining the stability of children to participate in sport. Two, critical incident management and reporting procedures. Three, protocol on the provision of medical and other services at training and competition, etc. And four, training and certification in safety and response. Minister Grange was speaking in Parliament Wednesday. She also informed the House that preliminary discussions were had with various child-related agencies and ISA to see to the creation of a safe environment for children in sport. The government must and will lead, but when it comes to safeguarding children, we'll need all hands on deck. Also in Parliament Wednesday, Labour and Social Security Minister Shahini Robinson said revisions were being made to the occupational safety and health legislation. Speaking against the backdrop of the island's September 22 ratification of the Domestic Workers' Convention, Mrs. Robinson said the legal and administrative framework was being revised to address outstanding requirements. It is expected that the requisite adjustments will be implemented within 12 months between the ratification of the convention and its actual implementation date. This administration reaffirms our commitment to the nation's workers. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching.